Whose money is it? That is the topic of tonight's byline. How people react to things like the budget tells you a lot about how they think about the economy, how they view taxes, what they think the job of government is. So it's important to listen when people speak. Too much of journalism in this country, too much of media time is spent on horse race crap. Will this move help or hurt? Who's up in the polls? Who's down? I don't care about that stuff as much as I care about policies. I care about someone's worldview. These things matter. And when people speak about something like the budget, then they tell you their worldview, at least when it comes to money. And that's what counts because it tells you where they would go if they were in power. As some of the first critics out of the gate from yesterday's budget were the public sector unions, the union bosses who represent federal workers don't like the budget. And they don't like it becoming balanced next year. Debbie Davio, president and CEO of the Professional Institute of the Public Service of Canada, said this budget attacks Canada's foundation. She said it's simply not possible for the government to put its fiscal house in order when the foundations, the programs and services that Canadians are or Canadians depend on are crumbling. Really? The government spending $279 billion. That's a projection. The Harper government has 13,000 more civil servants, not counting military and RCMP, than when they took power. Government's bigger, we spend more, but PIP6 says the foundations are crumbling. Why? Because they want the government to be even bigger. They want deficit spending to continue because, well, it helps them have more members, which means more money for the union. Another big union, QP, denounced the idea of a budget surplus. Why? They want more spending. QP is calling for strength in public services, investments in public infrastructure, and leadership from the federal government on expanding the Canada Pension Plan. They believe government spending creates jobs, and we need more government spending to help the Canadian economy. Sounds a lot like Liberal leader Justin Trudeau. He believes that as well. Appearing on CPAC, Trudeau was asked about deficit spending and whether he would run a deficit if he was in power. Trudeau not only refused to rule out deficit spending, but talked about the need for more government spending to grow the economy. The commitment needs to be uh, a commitment to grow the economy and the budget will balance itself. I think the kinds of investments that one needs to make uh, need to be made in order to grow, grow the economy and we don't have to talk about longer term, we can talk about medium term. Unreal. More government spending, more government, more spending money we don't have, that is unless we raise taxes. It's amazing to listen to these guys, the unions or the opposition, because they act as if the money's theirs. They forget that government has no money, that it first does not take from someone else, primarily my pocket and yours. They raid our bank accounts to fund their plans. Then they get upset at the idea of a tax cut. The Broadband Institute is complaining again that the budget is not only on its way to being balanced, but that it might lead to a tax cut. They said, the budget also prepares the way for the implementation of income splitting, a $3 billion tax giveaway that offers no help to the Canadians who need relief the most. Hmm, like families? They don't count? Now, it shouldn't surprise you that a left-wing group that thinks tax money is government money would be against tax cuts. But you might be surprised to find out that Finance Minister Jim Flaherty is now against tax cuts. He's been backing away from income splitting for a while now because he simply does not like it. But now, he's going public. Hi, uh, Annie Bergeron Oliver with iPolitics. Hi. Uh, hi. Earlier today you said that you're not sure income splitting is uh, benefiting families overall or would benefit families overall. I'm wondering if this means that you're going to rule out the idea of income splitting uh, as a way that's something to introduce in the next budget. You know, it's, it's an interesting idea. I'm just one voice. Um, it benefits some parts of the uh, Canadian population um, a lot. And uh, other parts of the Canadian population virtually not at all. Flaherty, in another appearance, called income splitting a shiny bauble, said if it was up to him, he wouldn't do it. Looks to me like he's been spending too much time listening to the likes of Rick Smith of the Broadband Institute and not enough time reading the platform he ran on. Because here's what the Conservatives promised on page 26 of their platform in 2011. We will soon be in a position to take an historic step forward to achieve greater fairness for families. We will establish the family tax cut and income sharing for couples with dependent children under 18 years of age. 
This will give spouses the choice to share up to $50,000 of their household income for federal income tax purposes. This important new measure will be implemented when the federal budget is balanced within our next full mandate. Tax relief, approximately 1.8 million Canadian families, each of them saving on average $1,300 per year. So much for that promise. Now, I asked the PM's office for a clear answer on whether they stand by the election promise or if they're backing away from it like Flaherty. I can't get a clear answer. I've been told about past tax cuts and tax credits and balancing the books is job one. I just want a clear answer on this. The promise was clear. Balance the budget, bring in income splitting. Does that stand? It should be easy, but it's not. And it's infuriating that this is happening, but... No, Flaherty's being wooed by the progressives that don't like tax cuts, and he's starting to sound like them. Like I said, when politicians or union activists or any of these guys that have influence start talking about the budget, well, listen. Listen to their words. It tells you their worldview. And too many, including Jim Flaherty, seem to think that your money is their money to play with. It's time to re-educate them. And that's the byline. Mr. Kenny, just a quick question. Are you looking forward to the government introducing uh, income splitting after the budget is balanced? Yeah, it was in our platform, absolutely. But, uh, the bottom line is it's about tax fairness uh, for uh, families so they don't get penalized. Um, and uh, I think that makes a lot of sense, fairness. All right, Warren Kinsella joins us now. Warren, you've been involved in a lot of campaigns over the years, obviously not on the conservative side, but you've got Jim Flaherty saying he doesn't like it. He's the finance minister. Jason Kenney, very popular minister, saying... He's all in favor of it. Does this show a big split in the Conservative caucus on a key platform promise? I think it shows. I mean, the only explanation I can come up with is that Jim Flaherty was being advised by uh, Jack Daniels and, and Jim Beam because what he said was so completely at odds with what his platform, his party's platform, but also his last budget had to say. I mean, Kenny and Tony Clement and others who are now coming out saying, no, this is still our position. They're right. It is their position. Well, except maybe not, um, because Tom Mulcair asked Stephen Harper about it today. And in my view, there's not a clear answer coming from the PM either. Let's roll tape on that. Does the Prime Minister agree with his finance minister that the Conservative plan is of no help to the vast majority of Canadian families. This government uh, said in the last election made a commitment that uh, when we balance the budget, the budget is not yet balanced. But when we budget the balance, uh, one of the highest priorities of this government will be tax reduction for Canadian families. All right, <laughs> uh, other than saying budget the balance and, and getting that max, me, messed up, uh, to me, he's not giving a clear answer. But uh, what I loved in, in the background of the picture, I don't know if you noticed, is Jim Flaherty looking like he wished he was somewhere else. Than... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, I did notice. Actually, yeah, I wish I wasn't here. Um, this is one of those difficult days that prime ministers have, and I've had the privilege of working for one, where you're trying to balance between some wildly differentiating statements between your ministers um, but, you know, the bottom line is, in black and white, there it is, the position that Flaherty's taking, whether you agree with him or not. And I'm sure there are officials within finance advising him to take this position. It's not the position of his, his party. So uh, the, the political reality is, forget about the fiscal reality, you know, today you and I should be talking about the budget and the yeah. rollout and all the stuff that was in it. And there was a lot of stuff in it. Here we are talking about a big communications problem. Yeah, and I can tell you for a fact, Flaherty personally hates income splitting. And if it goes through, it'll be because Stephen Harper says you're doing it. That's the only way it's going to happen. I want to ask you about Justin Trudeau and uh, the deficit spending. We'll get to a clip of Trudeau on something else that caught your ear in a minute. But his clip that we played in the monologue about deficit spending... He seemed to be saying he was all for it. Now, back when you worked for a prime minister, as you put it, um, he was the deficit slayer. Now you've got Trudeau saying, well, no, no, we need more deficit spending, not less. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, and Ralph Goodell made the same kind of statement just a few days ago in the lead up to the budget. It is, yeah, and no less than Jim Flaherty said in 2009, I think, you know, we're all Keynesians now, but it is, 2014 is not 2009. And I, for sure, you know, is it possible that we could slip into recession again and we have some kind of global crisis? For sure. But the IMF and the G7 say that's not going to happen. 
and that Canada is actually, as Harper said, in not bad shape. So uh, I think both Flaherty and Trudeau are a little bit behind the curve here in terms of the messaging. While Canadians are nervous, there's no doubt about it, and worried about their future, the, the economic reality is things are getting slightly better. All right, let's play a, a clip that caught your ear. And we talked about it a bit last night on the Battleground special. Uh, this is Justin Trudeau talking about where the government is failing in the budget. We have a government that is deciding to balance the budget in the short term for electoral uh, reasons, to balance the budget in an election year on the backs of workers with a uh, $5.2 billion uh, maintaining of uh, EI premiums artificially high uh, and other such measures uh, on asset sales and on uh, putting off procurement for uh, DND. Yeah, putting that's off surprising. procurement for DND. I mean, that's well. Yeah, you're the one your who caught it. I, I give you credit well, on the panel. You were the guy who caught it. I was more laughing at the sterling commitment to snowmobile clubs yet again. <laughs> and uh, I, but, I, but that's essentially saying we, we need to be buying our military more stuff, and that surprises me from Justin Trudeau. Yeah, and it, I mean it's not reflective of what the last Liberal platform was. Now he's a new Liberal leader, and he's allowed to take different positions than Mr. Ignatieff did. But it, it was surprising because that is not usually a constituency from which the Liberal Party gets a lot of votes, which is defense procurement. So I, I, it'll be interesting to see how he fleshes this one out over the next few days. But I think you were saying off camera before we got started, I think you're absolutely right. Everybody's having kind of a crummy post-budget communications day, except Tom Mulcair. Yeah. The other guys are all kind of messy and, and scattered and, you know, the he NDP and Mulcair look okay. All right, Warren, good talking to you as always. Chat soon. Thank you. Email me.